Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Shintaro Higashi and you guys are listening to the Shintaro Higashi Show with Peter Yu. Today we're going to talk a little bit about different training methodologies for martial arts. Right, specifically around fitness. Fitness, yeah. yeah. Fitness is huge. Fitness is for everybody. Judo, jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickbox, that stuff is not for everybody. Right, <laughs> we know this already. You know? <laughs> a lot of this stuff is marketed as for everybody, but mm. we all know, right, not everybody can do Right. Certain martial arts because it's very taxing on the body, mm-hmm. right? So, Injuries, this and that, all those things matter. But and, fitness is for everybody. Right. So then <laughs> also it, it really helps with your grappling in general, right? Being, It's not just about techniques. You need all basic fitness. Yeah, and, yeah. So this idea of like the smaller, less athletic person can always beat a bigger, stronger athlete if right. they know the martial art. There's a little bit of truth to that, but there's a little bit of false to that too, Mm -hmm. right? Because there's certain abilities that can overcome size and strength, but technique and size and strength, all these different things are different variables that matter overall. Right. So why not not become more fit and strong, stronger, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Why not become (laughs) fitter and stronger? And the example that I always, always circle back to is I've done martial arts my entire life, every martial art, right? Right. Jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, everything and anything I've done. Uh Japanese jiu-jitsu, Aikido, karate, everything. But if I went against a gorilla, (laughs) I I wouldn't beat the gorilla. (laughs) Two limbs, neck, legs, very strong gorilla. I'm going to go out there and try to grip fight or avoid the thing and shoot (laughs) it on the legs. That gorilla is going to grab my wrist and just break it and crush it. Right? No, seriously, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like there's limits to this stuff. Yeah. But if you're fighting in the same weight class right. and you're stronger than the other person, right? All things equal, like those mm-hmm. things can help, right? right? Sometimes you're in a bad position. You know, someone has mount or pinning you, Kamishi Ogotame, there's, yeah. you have to be able to bridge and push off, right? Yeah, which requires strength. Yeah. Which requires flexibility. strength. Flexibility. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, yeah. there was a famous grappler that, you know, a wrestler, right? I mm. think it was Dan Gable that says, fatigue makes cowards out of all of us. Oh. Right? So it's like four minutes in, five minutes into a match and you're exhausted, right? Mm-hmm. And you can't breathe and you can't stand. Like, forget, what what technique are you going to be able to do, use? Right. That is, yeah, that is, Dan Gable's always with like <clears throat> these snippets of wis- wisdom. Yeah. So, Dude, catch me yeah. on a day where I'm doing uphill sprints and I'm uh, eight sprints in, nine sprints in, my legs uh, are shaking and uh, my uh, lungs are burning and you know, have somebody with zero experience try to mug me. I, I don't know if I could protect myself. <laughs> yeah. Right? Can you? <laughs> right. right. No, can anybody? No you know? Yeah. That's when you can beat o- uh, Ono Shohei after his uh, wind sprints up down the mountains and whatnot. Yeah. Wind sprints, broken arm, blindfolded. <laughs> yeah. <maybe that. laughs> right? Yeah. So, okay. So, maybe we'll start with uh, just running like that everyone wants to do. Uh, how? Yeah. How do you... Well, how do you approach running? Do you run a lot or? You know, man, I, yeah. I, uh, there was a time when I tore my pec and labrum mm. and I couldn't bench. I couldn't, I couldn't even right. do sprints because I couldn't bring my arm forward fast enough. Oh, uh, so right. I decided to run a half marathon. Oh, year. nice. Oh, yeah, you right. haven't told me about this. Oh, yeah? yeah you didn't no, know this? No. Yeah, so I ran a half marathon. Holy cow. How, yeah. how, how was that? Did you like tra- train for it or you just went for it? You know what? It? This is the thing. Not really. Like kind of not really. Like yeah. I've never been into long distance running. I've hated yeah. long distance running my whole life. I'm not right. a long distance runner. I'm a yeah. short burst sprinter. Right. right? Fast twitch 2A fibers. Yeah. I'm very good at that. I'm very naturally like gifted in that sense. But I have horrible long-term endurance. Right. So, you know, one mile, two miles, you used to suffer through those, right? Yeah. Very embarrassing stuff. You know, people would be like, oh, I ran five miles today. It's like, how could you run five miles? So I decided yeah. to train for this thing because I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't right. really do that much judo. I couldn't sprint. I couldn't mm. bench. So the only thing I could do is go for long, slow jogs. Mm. So I started doing that. I think I got up to like six or seven miles and I was like, all right, this is not so hard. And then I decided to run a half marathon and I applied for the lottery, the New York City half marathon, marathon. Half marathon lottery. And I got it for some crazy chance. Right, because you could either do the lottery or you could qualify by running eleven road runner races and volunteering. Oh, or something uh, yeah, like yeah, this. yeah. It's a whole thing. I applied for the lottery, just put and my then, name in it. I got selected. Got it. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy thing by yeah. chance. And then I didn't really train for it. I never even ran more than six or seven miles, and I went into it. And half marathon is how long? Thirteen point one, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, jeez. And man, that was brutal. It was how, brutal. How how long did it take you? 
It took me a very long time. It took me like three and a half hours, four hours, something crazy. I was really, really slow, man. I got to tell you, like I walked a lot of it. You know, this is the problem. I have no experience running this stuff. Right, right. So you, right? Could have, and, you didn't know how to pace yourself and anything. Right? Didn't know how to pace myself. Yeah. And this is what happened first and foremost. Lots of excuses here, right? <laughs> I was like, I got to remain hydrated. That's what right. I read online. So I took a gallon of water and I started chugging it and drinking tons of water. So the race starts, boom, go. Right. I immediately need to use the restroom. <laughs> I stop by the first restroom. I jog a little bit. I stop by the second restroom, <laughs> jog a little bit, stop by the third restroom. J right? Like It was just like the word. Like, you had to use all the restroom stops in the beginning. Right? Huge mistake. That's an hour right there. That's It burns so much time, man. <laughs> it burns so much time. And yeah. now it's like I'm like going behind, behind, behind. And now you're stuck in this wave of people with the heads bobbing up and down, right. up and down. Right. And then I'm like, all right, I got to get through this. And I started kind of taking off a little bit, trying to like weave in and out and through. Right. Right. And then I burnt myself out. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. I burnt myself out. I got tired. So I started walking. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Really embarrassing, man. It was like a failure in every way. Uh -huh. But let me tell you, it was a crazy cool experience because like you're doing this thing. I like remember running through Central Park and then coming down on like Sixth Avenue or Fifth Avenue or something like Seventh Avenue. And you're yeah. like running towards Times Square. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, they oh, then, that's a yeah. different route than the full yeah. one. And yeah. then, you know, uh, it was like super cool, man, I gotta tell you. And then I kind of hit a stride. And then You got the high? The runner's high? The, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I was like listening to music, you know. And I remember uh I was away in the back. Mm. You know, like I told you, I'm a sprinter. Everyone, I'm a sprinter, okay? I'm right. fast at sprinting. I'm not a long distance runner. I've never I kind of did this on a whim. I didn't really right. train. And then I'm stuck next to this crazy overweight woman. Uh -huh. you know she's like has like a leg limp so she's uh -huh. running sideways she's like overweight she's probably like 200 pounds like running sideways wow respect hey respect man yeah and then i was competing against her <laughs> right? and then there was an old guy he must have been like 80 oh respect man how yeah and this man. guy was like chugging along chugging along and you could yeah. tell he's suffering and i'm right. like suffering but not really i'm like kind of like all right get back into my pace right and then, uh, you know, my goal was to beat those two, and I did beat those two, so I'm very <laughs> proud of myself. At last, you know, surprisingly, right, uh, because I had the mishap of having to use the restroom every, you know, five right. stops or something like that, and then uh, I had to walk because I burned myself out, and yeah. then by the time I was, like, getting into my 10th mile, 11th mile, like, I was yeah. feeling good. So then I, like, kind of, like, really ran the last bit, and uh, I blew those two away, and I was very proud of myself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nice but yeah, but that's so, my little half marathon experience right never again yeah so you, you don't really do you, you don't really run now like you don't i do run, run. i do run oh you do I, like i just don't like long distance running yeah truthfully and i have a lot of ankle mobility issues so i have a big discrepancy in the mobility in my both my ankles right because right? i have a bone fusion in my right ankle oh because because so you my right broke it I don't even know. Maybe I was born oh. with it. Maybe I heard it. Yuck, oh, early on. yeah. Okay, so okay. like my right ankle can't really. Right. Oh, so and then I had knee injuries. I had uh, articulate cartilage tear in my right left one and yeah. I had surgery for that one. And I had MCL. So it's like and I'm heavy. I'm a heavy guy. I'm like 205, 210. Right. So it's like between the impact, uh, my ankle mobility issues and my knee issues and my me, right. be, me being a heavy person, like it's just not comfortable for my knees mm -hmm. at all. So. I don't really like going for long distance runs. Right. You know what I mean? And it, long distance running is not very good for you anyway. I think it's not good for judo, period. Right. Because it's more, judo is, and grappling in general is more like, sprint oriented, I guess. Like Somewhat. It's a right. So yeah. depending on the martial art. So this goes back to like knowing what you, how you are. Right. And then knowing what your goals are. Right? Yeah. If you're doing boxing, you need that long distance running, that shuffling, moving, going, because you're kind of mm. spending a lot of time bobbing, moving, bobbing, moving, right. and you explode quick shots, moving quick shots. So it's like you need that kind of like, okay, go for a three mile run, go for a five mile run, go every day is to have your wind burning. Uh. So if you look at these three minute rounds and you do 10, that's 30 minutes, you need to be able to keep moving and, you know, moving around for 30 minutes at a time. So you got to go for those 30 minute runs. Mm. You know, the match is four minutes and it's super quick bursts. Right. So if you're a judo player, you should be doing a lot more sprints. Right. 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 So then you're looking at the anaerobic aerobic sort of ratio. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's not as explosive and fast. It's a lot more control, right? Restricting right. movement, isometric sort of a thing. Yeah. So different energy systems are at play. Uh -huh. Right. So if you're doing judo, you got to do short, fast sprints. Wrestling, mm. short, fast sprints. Mm. Right. Because you need that kind of a thing. Right. 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 And then boxing, you got to do the little bit slightly longer running situation 
Brazilian mm. Jiu-Jitsu and like lots of that Nawaza stuff, I think that somewhere it fits in between. I see. So you have to know your sport, what you're trying to train for. Right, right. right. And this is the thing. If I'm training to lose weight, to make a particular weight, mm. doing those short sprints are great, but the long distance running of where I'm out hitting the pavement for five miles, 10 miles, that's the one that burns the most calories. Right. 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 It doesn't align with my uh, explosive energy systems that I need for judo, right? But your so goal is different, right? The then, goals are different, yeah, right? Yeah. So a lot of the times, if in a perfect world, if I had all the time in the world and if I mm -hmm. had perfect knees, right, I would have, you know, two or three days, two days of hard sprinting uphill. Mm -hmm. Uphill is a little bit better for me because a little less pressure on the knees, right? Mm -hmm. so do uphill sprints and I have like a progressive overload program specifically for that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have, you know, a running day, a long distance running day where I could sort of use to just burn my calories and, you know, yeah. burn as many calories and just for weight management. Right, right. I right, see. So that would be sort of my approach. Mm. But if you're a judo player and you have no explosive power, like you're just not an explosive athlete, you're just naturally a long distance lanky mm -hmm. person, then you have to develop your judo style for that body type, right? And if you want to develop athletic, you know, boom, explosive yeah. stuff, then you have to do like stadium stairs, you know, sprints right. and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, some people just, right? So you have to know your sport, know your goals. Right, right. Because, yeah. yeah, some athletes, like some judo, uh, judo guys, they kind of go for the long grinding style of matches, you know, like they just yeah. tire the other opponent out and then yeah. catch him at the end. So, they, so yeah, you have of, to yeah. really think of this way. And <clears throat> I've been in training camps and training right. things and training methodologies where I've had coaches like, all right, we're just going to go out there and run as hard as we can. And then we're going to do sprints at the end. Right. And that's good that you can do that. You know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. right, like, it's not the best for you because it's not really designed for what your goals are, right? Mm -hmm. It's just for everybody. It's like, everybody, right. get on the line. We're going to do, you know, three laps here. Go. Boom. Three laps, right? All right, everyone get on the line. We're going to do sprints. Ten sprints. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Who's faster? Who's, you know, whatever it is, like, burning your lungs. And, you know, there is merit to that, mm -hmm. right? But I think, you know, if you're a much more smarter athlete, smarter martial artist who wants to be a little bit more efficient in their methods then you have to kind of take a different right. approach or you have to really question all these different things right yeah this is the thing like if i have knee pain if i'm doing hard sprints on the pavement right yes doing three sprint three you know three sets of sprints a week is probably good for my lungs and good for my energy system but if i can't barely walk between you know sessions and i can't really do judo then i'm actually doing more harm than good right because you right? Did, so, so you're, because your primary thing is judo yeah. yeah, and I this is I, I did this for years, you know, right. hard sprints twice a week, like crazy hard where mm. I'm barely walking, right? And then heavy deadlifts, you know, 500-pound deadlifts and 400-pound squat, and then I'm like, like crippled and my back hurts and I'm going right. to judo and I can't really get a good workout in. But like everyone's telling me like, yeah, you got to push yourself and fatigue yourself and then go into judo and then do judo and you have yeah. to train while you're fatigued. So, you know, you, right? And then it's like, was that really the best thing for me? Probably mm. not. You know, that probably yeah. did a lot more harm than good. It's like little injuries here and there. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like a, you don't really get quality training that right. way. And, you know, mentally it's good for you, right, to be able yeah. to push through that and be like, oh, I outworked yeah. everyone. I, I'm stronger than everyone, yeah. faster than everyone. I, I, these guys didn't do what I did, right. you know. And psychologically, it makes you, I think, tougher, uh, right? But it has to be a balance of both. Right. You know what I mean? Those are so, some of the... You know, I, I think back to those days and it's like, wow, that's beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Get up in the morning and doing, you know, going for a five mile run and then finishing with 10 hard sprints, Dang. right? Doing yeah. a morning judo session and then training and working on the technical side, yeah. take a nap, then go to the gym and deadlift 500 pounds. 565 was my max. You know? oh. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who wonder if anybody's <laughs> keeping track, right? I, yeah. I'm definitely not doing that now, but like deadlifting super heavy weight, right? I right. See. Getting on the bench 315, pushing that up and then like, Going to judo at night and throwing down for two hours, and at the end of the night, you're like, man, no one, you're spent. no one. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like the king, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be the best. Nice, you know. And then yeah. the next day, you can't barely move. You know? <laughs> yeah, for for me, I I, I hate running time. Kind of like that, to, uh, like you, where I, I'm I was I've always been be better at sprinting. Yeah. So, like, I hate it. I hate long distance running. So I just played soccer on off days. Yeah. That's and, good. 
That's I great. I think that's another way. Like, if you just try to play another sport that involves running, if you want to work on that, I guess. Yeah, man, you had a great soccer is great because it's yeah. it's the mix of both, right? You're yeah. sprinting, you're jogging, you're sprinting, right. you're jogging. It's like this interval training. It's kind of ideal. You yeah, know? keeps your weight down. You know, that's a great thing. You know, as long as you don't tear your Achilles heel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually, I actually got more, worse injuries playing soccer than judo. I, it's yeah, it, you tore your Achilles heel. Uh, yeah, I tore my Achilles tendon. I I broke my tooth. I it's it's crazy. It, it um uh, and and then recently I picked up rollerblading because you know I I couldn't play soccer here. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll probably hopefully I'll I'll be back. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're so, doing anything to stay fit, stay yeah, fit is good. I know? think that's the it's doing anything is better than yeah. doing nothing. So whatever you, you know, yeah. The most overlooked exercise ever in all of grappling, mm. all of martial arts. Period. Uh. Is just straight up walking. Walking. Oh, walking's great because it checks off the list of the weight management side, right? Mm. Because it's a weight class sport, you know. Right. Unless you're fighting super heavyweight and you're 350 pounds, but even mm. then, right, you have an optimal weight. Everyone right. has an optimal weight. Mm-hmm. So, in order to get to that optimal weight, you have to do some form of exercise, right, and calorie expenditure. Right. And walking is great because you could go super long distance. You could burn super so many calories. Right. 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 You burn 500 calories walking an hour. Oh. With zero impact on the body. I didn't know that it, it, it uses up so much energy. Yeah, man. Walking. It's yeah. great. Maybe I'm wrong about the 500 calories. Maybe it's like 300. But it depends right. on the body type, depends right. on the person, all the stuff, how what the pace you're walking at. Right. But this is the most interesting thing about the walking is that it doesn't trigger a hunger response. So if you go out there and do 20 sprints, 10 sprints, whatever it is, now you're just like you burn a ton of calories. You're burning more throughout the day. Mm-mm. Right? Right, because it just it right. raises your metabolism, but it also raises your appetite. So mm. if you're running with the means of weight management for a specific sport mm. that requires you to be at an optimal weight, right? Now all of a sudden you're doing sprints, but you're also hungry. So I now you see. have to kind of fight that psychologically too. Right. And I always lose that battle. I'm throwing back <laughs> ice cream, pizza, it's like all of that <laughs> stuff. I love that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So walking is like really one of the most overlooked because it's easy on the joints, man. It's easy right, on the joints right. to put yourself at a caloric deficit. It takes, yeah. you know, I mean, it does take a little bit longer than general, but like the other exercises, but anyone can do it. Right. That's the thing. Anyone can do it. Low impact. It doesn't, you know, you can walk two miles and then go to judo and still be good. Yeah. Yeah. Be fresh. Right. Yeah. So walking is like, That's I think one point. of the most, yeah. yeah, walking is huge. That should be a part, you know, now with these pretty sophisticated trackers on your phone and stuff Mm -hmm. right Ten thousand steps a day that's like five miles right so it's like that Ten thousand steps do you know about that the Ten Thousand steps is a marketing ploy by a japanese pedometer company Uh, yeah but uh, my grandpa had that pedometer from japan yeah he was like yeah Yeah. like walk ten thousand steps to be healthy was this whole marketing ploy like uh ten thousand steps ten thousand steps and there's some truth to it right and uh, that's a good sort of metric, mm. right? To see, and you know, sometimes if you're a sedentary person, like when I have a sedentary day, it's like, oh man, two thousand steps. You know, it's like that's right. like a sedentary day for me. But you know, when I have an active day, like if I take the dog out, I take my kid to the park, and yeah. I'm like, you know, walking here, walking there, and then I park the car a little bit farther away from the dojo or something. You know, I, I hit you know seven, eight thousand steps. Mm-hmm. But if I actively try to get over 10,000, I can, mm-hmm. you know, with relatively little effort, mm-hmm. right? And it's good for my weight. And I'm burning mostly fat during that time. Right. So it's like one of the most overlooked things. That should be definitely a part. So if you're really looking to use this sort of cardio-based situation. Right. Right. Walking, long distance running, sprinting. Those are the sort of the three. And you don't have to just do one. You kind of have to mix it up based on where you are in your training cycle right right but walking every day that's 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 an easy one i guess it, it's yeah i think <clears throat> that's a good point you make i think the the fact like kind of like having an active lifestyle yeah. like it was easier for me honestly in new york city because i will take the subway and i'll walk everywhere right yeah you know but i realized that when i moved to michigan you tend to drive more yes yeah that's so, a huge one yeah, yeah i think so now yeah i try to I try not to drive if I could walk, and you know, like now you rollerblade or rollerblade. Yeah, I mean that's more yeah. fun than just walking. <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah, try to With your little crop top. Man. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> with a little, yeah. And a bandana. Uh, exactly, like bandana. Yeah. And knee pads <laughs> and elbow pads. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, having a, a just, I guess the baseline has to be raised up a little, right? Like at the life, you know, try to have more active lifestyle. Maybe don't yeah. take the elevator or, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, that stuff farther. adds up. Yeah. Exactly. Adds up, you yeah. know. I know this guy, like he was really lean and always lean. And it's like, man, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. He always attributed to fast metabolism, genetics. But right. then it's like, I spent a lot of time with this kid. He was a great D1 wrestler. Yeah. He's just so active, man. He's like never really sitting. He's like a restless guy. He's like walking right. back and forth, pacing back and forth. <laughs> Every time he gets on the phone, he's like, Pat, you know, right, right, right? right. He's like, hey, man, it's like, I'm, I'm third. Like, I'm going to go to the store. You know, you want something. And he's like, kind of like always like that. And it's like, yeah. okay. He's burning tons of calories. Right, right. And that stuff really adds up. Right. right? So throw those in, you know, your training methodologies. And, you know, if you want to hear a little bit about, you know, actual like hard sprinting and stuff, like there's science behind that too. You have to do high intensity interval training if you're doing judo, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, Jiu-jitsu, I think it's a little bit different of energy system. So something like soccer might even be more ideal. Right, right. Right. I see. So so now that's the cardio sign. and. And I know you. Well, you're. I mean, every, you just mentioned how much you you could deadlift. That's impressive. So like you, yeah. you lift a lot. You even lift, bro. Yeah, dude, you, man. I yeah. was into lifting yeah. since I was like 15 years old, man. Oh wow, 15 years old. Yeah, always been into lifting. Love lifting. And this is the thing. Like they're not mutually exclusive, right? You don't right. have to just do cardio or lift weights. Yeah. You know, you could use weights as a means to do cardio, like mm-hmm. circuit training. Mm-hmm. Right, we like see this boot thing camp called, style, like all those, like yeah, yeah. CrossFit yeah. is like the whole yeah, thing yeah. is like kind of essentially cardio. Right, right. You know, so that's a very interesting thing. You know, mm-hmm. and lifting, it's a, it's definitely should be part of someone's mm-hmm. routine. You know, but I've also heard the theory, like this philosophy of like if you're doing judo, the best training is judo. Right, right. And I've right. heard people do that. Right. So when you're talking about like lifting, running body weight stuff, training, mm. uh, mobility stuff, all this stuff. This is supplemental to your sport. Right, right. right. So if you're a wrestler, you should be wrestling most, first and foremost, mm-hmm. right? And yes, you can supplement your conditioning by doing these sprints, but it's a supplement mm-hmm. at best, right? First, right. So you have to wrestle if you're going to be good at wrestling. And right. I've heard people be like, hey, you know, I wrestle and that's all I do. I develop the strength that I need through wrestling. I don't Mm -hmm. need to go to the gym. I don't have to go to the gym. I won't go to the gym. Mm. But then there's these like uh, philosophies too. It's like, oh, it's injury prevention. Right. Right? It's working on mobility stuff to where I am strong at the end range of emotion. Because if I ever get put in that situation where my arm is extended and if I try Mm. to apply force, my shoulder is going to go. Right. Right. So there's different ideas behind this. And also like wrestling and judo and then I guess even... VJJ, like you tend to prefer one size, so your body could be a little unbalanced in a way, right? Yeah. 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 So you can supplement that with weightlifting. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because the imbalances always cause right. injuries, right? They, yeah. I, you know, my cousin Eugene, you know him, is a yeah. physical therapist, and he always says two things can lead to injuries, mm. right? Going too hard, too fast. Right, right. And it's one, yeah. right? And then having imbalances. Right, right. Right. Imbalance, whether it's like my right side stronger than the left or you mm-hmm. favor this or that imbalance to where like, oh, the end of the range of the motion is not strong. We're having limited mobility, all these different things. Right. 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 You get bunched in that group. So <clears throat> it's very there's a lot of truth to that, you know. Right. You have to you have to really watch out for that. So how do you how do you lift? Do you uh, do you just lift heavy with us? Uh, you know, there are a lot of different styles, right? Like you lift. All yeah, a lot of different training styles yeah. and a lot of different ideas. Right. You know, and I've done the bodybuilder split where it's like, oh, right. chest on Mondays. You know, you're right, benching, right. And you're doing 16 sets per body part, mm-hmm. you know, per workout. Right. And then uh, chest on Monday, you back on Tuesday, Dang, you know, legs on Wednesday, that's take a, a break, yeah. <laughs> arms. You know, I've done that bodybuilder yeah. split and there, there's something to that. You know, right, right. you get jacked. Right, right, right. And even now, research says that's actually not the best way for bodybuilders. Oh, really? Lift. Yeah. What do now they you, say? Now say you want to do, uh, you want to get a certain number of sets per body part, uh, right, per week. So that's the way they look at it now. So as opposed to doing all your 16 sets uh, on uh, Monday for your chest, uh, right, you want to do eight sets on Monday, eight sets on Thursday, and get 16 sets for the whole week. 
I see. Just have to yeah. get the 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 amount. Like it's almost like the yeah. macro, or whatever. Kind yes, of idea. yes, yeah. Okay. That's the kind of idea. Uh, so it's like a, a push pull legs split is very popular now, right? So if I do right. pushing exercises, maybe like bench press and then shoulder presses yeah. or whatever it is on Monday, pull. Okay, like rows and mm-hmm. dumbbell rows, or whatever it is on Tuesday, and then Wednesday I do heavy squats. Right. I take a day off and then. The next cycle again, push pull legs. I go back into that sort of situation where I'm back right. in doing pushes, and then you know you could do like incline this time, and now I'm doing dips instead of flat bench stuff like this. As long as I get 16 sets per body part, right? Like that's another way that sort of mm. you know it's popular, much more popular now. I haven't heard the, about it yet. Yeah, yeah, weightlifting. I see. You know, bodybuilding world, but we're not bodybuilders, right? Yeah, right. So hypertrophy training repetitions eight to twelve. Right, that's not really the most optimal thing Mm -hmm. if you're trying to gain just raw strength, right? Oh, yeah. So what should we do? Well, so that really depends on you, your body type, right? Mm. Weight management, optimal body thing. If you think about, for instance, like pull-ups, right? Right. If you think about pull-ups, and if you're doing a pull-up and you're holding the at the top of the motion and you're squeezing, right? Like that's uh. an isometric contraction. That's very good for judo. Think about it, right? Right, right. I mean, that's a portion of it. Right. So like grabbing, like for in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, there's more of this because you are ha- have someone in closed guard, you're pulling their head down, you're right, holding right. tight, you're squeezing your lat. That's an isometric contraction, right? So there's more of that in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, less of that in judo, mm. right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, if you want to think lifting for judo, right? Okay, we got to do the deadlift. But what is the most explosive exercise that you can kind of think of? Okay, cleans and snatch, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. oh, you want to progressively overload that. And then people naturally tend to think the more I could clean, the more I could snatch, the better I'm going to be, the more explosive I'm going to be, the faster I'm going to be for judo. Right. Right? That's sort of like kind of the mentality. And so uh-huh. people think, oh, that's what I should be doing. And I've had tons of trainers be like, oh, judo is an explosive sport. Right. Cleans, snatch, go. Right, right. But this is the thing. I don't have the mobility to be able to do those exercises. Oh, especially right? like what? what's the other call? Snatch. Oh, the snatch. Yeah. yeah. That's so like, really hard on your shoulders. Very, very yeah. technique heavy, these lifts. Right. Yeah. So I've had, you know, oh, you have to do hand cleans. I mean, right? those yeah. are Olympic sports by them, like on yes. their own, yeah. you know. And I've had coaches tell me this yeah. and I'm like, okay. And I'm in the gym freaking Try, ripping, Lorna, you know, right. hand cleans and things yeah. like that. When I didn't have the proper elbow mobility, my lat is so right. tight, so I can't get in proper rack position, and I'm just throwing weight up, and it's like, oh man, you know, like I can go a little bit heavier. Now I'm loading onto this structure that's mm-hmm. in balance with n- improper form, and yeah, I'm getting weight up there, but it's not really good for me because it's adding to the level of stress to my body uh, on top of this like sort right. of faulty foundation, right? And, and it's really mm-hmm. not doing me any good. I see. I see. Right. So you have to know your body, you have to know your limits, right? You have to have specific goals. And then if you're lifting with this idea of, okay, I want this goals, that goals, mm-hmm. you have to have like a progressive overload system to where you're little by little, right? And you have to like plan in rest days to be able to recover. So don't, By the way, yeah. I'm not an expert, everyone. I'm not a physical therapist. I'm not a personal <laughs> trainer. This is all just like me as a hobbyist and enthusiast. You know, I'm a huge advocate for lifting, running and all this right. stuff, but I have no like formal, you know, real formal training. Yeah. I've spoken to a lot of experts, a lot of experts. So I think I know what I'm talking about, but, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Right? Yeah, yes. we should. We'll we'll have Eugene on at some point to talk about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, Eugene probably correct me. <laughs> Actually, Shintaro research shows. Yeah. <laughs> he lifts a lot, too, and he's very into all the mobility stuff. And he's a he's got yeah. a doctorate in physical therapy. So, yeah, he, he so, should, yeah. yeah the lifting is you know, it's nice. And I've heard people say these isms of like, right. I'm benching in the gym heavy. And then, you know, I heard people tell me like, why would you ever barbell bench? In judo, you always, always push with one arm or the other. So you should only use dumbbells when you're benching. It's like, I've heard that right. stuff before. And it's like, is that really true? Probably not, you know? I, I that, Actually, I kind of did that because I remember when I, when we used to go to the gym together, I only did dumbbell benches Yeah. because I thought that open, the idea was that, you know, you have to use more small muscles to, like, balance things. And I thought I mean, there's a little yeah. bit of truth for that, you yeah. know what I mean? But, you know, if you're really trying to develop pushing power and, yeah. you know, if you want to... Right, gain mass first and right, lift right, heavy right. weight and then start working those ancillary yeah. pieces in, right? So it's like 
there's both sides of the coin on that, right? There's no right, right. answer to this. So you, know? you, you really have to know yourself and then do that fits your body type. Yeah, you got to fit your body type, yeah. right? So like I used to love doing heavy bench and then, you know, repping out with uh, dumbbells afterwards, like a superset right. sort of a situation. Right, right. You know, and even if you're like getting, you know, a little bit more technical on the lifting side, like let's look at the bench. It's like, okay, you know, you, you could focus on the negatives, right? Mm. So that's a little bit different. Like you could, right, concentric versus eccentric contractions. Right, right. Right, slowing the person down versus mm. like exploding into the person, right? Uh. It's a similar idea. Mm. Right, and you don't want to create too many imbalances by just benching, and then it affects your posture. Judo is already an internally rotated sport, right? You know, and there's all these things that can potentially confuse you. People say things like judo is a pulling sport. Why would you work on your pushing yeah. movement? It's like oh, well, when you're trying to cut someone's hand off your gi you or trying push. to create yeah. distance, you're gonna push, right? I've heard coaches tell me that. It's like, why are you benching? You don't push <laughs> really? in judo. It's like you don't push in judo. It's the same ism in boxing as like. Don't punch with your arms. Punch with your legs. Don't punch. Don't use your arms to punch. You ever heard of this one? I I always I I mean I've heard that you know, you, you gotta like you know switch kind of twist your leg and then from yeah, your head I, I get all it. that yeah. yeah they're talking about like the kinetic chain you have right, to push right. off your feet you yeah. don't want to just punch like this using your arms right right, right. But it's like don't use your arms it's like that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard I mean you yeah you, you so have to arm be strong is the there. thing yeah. that it, and it ends the <laughs> yeah right. That's the end of the kinetic chain. Like, that's the one thing that makes contact. You can't not punch your hand. So, all right. So, I'm going to try to simplify it for everybody in terms of lifting. I'm already confused with all the things. I'm just confusing everything. This whole episode is all confusing. (laughs) There's a lot out there. Yeah. So, what's your, like, condensed, like, yeah. Condensed versions, obviously, compound movements are key. Compound movements. What are compound compound movements? movements? So, it's, like, not just using one Mm -hmm. joint, right? So, you can isolate a muscle like a bicep curl is mm. just one joint here the elbow joint mm. here and you're just con- right using your bicep that takes mm. forever work mm. the bicep work just this pec right, right right work just this quad right so you want your body to work together in these compound movements so like squats mm. bench pull-ups deadlifts right and then really focus on mobility mobility is key right some people mm. are just naturally inflexible mm-hmm. right or not mobile so you have to work on mobility and Stre- then i say yeah. yeah stick with the staples you know mm. Uh, squat, bench, deadlift, pull-ups, mm-hmm. right? Then that gets easy. You do weighted pull-ups, mm-hmm. things of that nature. Focus on the negatives, right? Slow down, high up, fast up, slow down, fast up, right? I see. Yeah, all these different methodologies. And, you know, you can start slow. You can start with body weight exercises, mm-hmm. right? Doing squats, doing pull-ups, doing push-ups, right? That alone covers the majority of your muscles, right? right? So the compound movement, yeah. So because we want like whatever, what they call like functional strength, right? Is functional like, strength, yeah. 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 And then, the and then although, you know, you're moving yeah. on these planes, right? Right. And you're doing a lot of these exercises. Like even now, okay, let's just say squat. Mm-hmm. You're a little bit more advanced, Peter. Let's do plyometrics jumps like, uh-huh. onto the box. Like you're, now you're right. exploding off, right? Yeah, that's great and all. But you're never really moving on just one front when you're grappling. You're mm. twisting, you're turning, yeah, you're yeah. core, right, stabilizing, right? And you're always turning one side a little bit more and all these different things. So you kind of have to train those movements too, mm. you know? So the best way to train those things is actually doing the sport. Right. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. right. An increase okay. in your range of motion is important to being strong at the end range of the motion is important. Right. I'm just keeping confusing everybody. <laughs> well, let me, let me try to paraphrase so that, you know... Uh, Make sure I understand and hopefully I can put it more simply. So you focus on the big like uh, compound movements. Yeah. Don't try to do all those like isolated things too much because that's for really for bodybuilders who want to really work on specific muscle to make yeah. them look good, right? And yeah, but you know, if it, lo- if it feels good, you do it. Right. I always do bicep curls. I love it. Oh, you're, yeah. It's mental <laughs> you're the, for me. Yeah, you, it's you mental want, for me. You're like I want that. big arms, man. Yeah. I want big arms. I know it has zero carry over to judo. Right. But it makes me feel good when I have big right. arms. You you like that pump, like Arnie Schwarzenegger. Arnie Schwarzenegger said. Yeah, and yeah. having a pump in my bicep yeah. just yeah. feels better than having a pump anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just it's very mental for me. Right. You know, so it's like So you yeah. the, so you so focus on those, and if you make it makes you feel better, you know, just do yeah. work those in. Know yourself yeah. is my my right. first and foremost. Know yourself, right. know your goals. Know yourself, know yeah. your goals. They go into the gym, and then having mm. someone write out a plan, and then 
you know, doing a push pull leg split right. and this many sets and counting in progressive overload and that that might not help you. You you right. might not be a very regimented person. Right. And it's right. Like, then you're never gonna stick to that thing. Right. right. So you have to know yourself first and foremost. That's you kind know, of what happened point. to me. Yeah. I like you know, when I first started lifting in like high school for yeah. sports, they always told me, Oh, I think a lot of the, these people got the idea from bodybuilding, which makes sense. They are like the experts in lifting. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, push pull days and whatever. But as the as I got older, I was like, I don't have time to go to the gym like every day of the week and whatnot. Yeah. So a lot of times I will miss like pull days mm. and push days. Yeah. So I just started doing everything in one day, all body. I'll just do. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Bench. I'll do bench squat pull-ups and a little bit of deadlift if i have time and that that'll be it yeah yeah it's one of our, so yeah. here's another split upper lower right. split upper mm. body day lower body day mm. right so you don't have to go every day you can right. do an upper body day and then during the upper body day you're trying to do mm -hmm. right and then also rep range is important right right so if you want to do get stronger mm -hmm. right you want to do lower rep ranges hypertrophy higher muscular endurance 12 to 20 reps right right so that's kind of a thing. What do you do? Uh, right now, I'm not really on a program. You know, right. I'm just getting over the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> so not yeah. on a program. But just that the most recent program that I was on was yeah. a upper lower split. Right. And you know, I used to have these like grand aspirations of deadlifting 600. Yeah. You know, and squatting 500, and you know, benching 400. That was like my aspiration, 654. Right. Dang. But like. That's my a, lot out. Of, a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like nowhere near it now. Like I kind of given up on it, truthfully. Right. You know, and heavy squats always kind of screw up my back mm -hmm. right? because I have a big imbalance in my like hip also mm. because of the way my ankles are and the uh, mobility. So I the see. length of my leg is a little bit different. Mm. So like <gasps> when I load oh. the weight on my back, it's like I think my pelvis is almost tilted. You know? I see. And uh, you can't really notice it. And I don't feel it on a day to day basis. But when you're loading your back with 400 pounds and yeah. then you're not squatting with perfect form with lots of asymmetries, it's going to freaking start wearing you out. Right. You right. Know? And it's going to cause a lot of issues. Right. You know? And uh, I used to just try to tough it out, try to tough mm -hmm. it out. And then I threw out my back once and then I threw out my back twice. And then mm -hmm. it's just like this never ending cycle of like right. trying to fix myself. You know? So right now I'm focusing on mobility. I'm doing a little bit more stretching. Yeah. Right. And I do believe like that with the proper training, with the proper consistency, you can overcome a lot of these issues and still be right. heavy, uh, right. lifting heavy and doing yeah. all these different things. But there are genetic limitations too. So unless I like truly focus on it, I can't mm. really make these changes. And I mm. know this about myself. You I know see. What I mean? I yeah, see. And it's not that important for me right. to deadlift right. 600 pounds. It's not mm. anymore. You right. know, ask me five years ago. I, I was gun ho about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember. You yeah, yeah. You have lifting real heavy. Big yeah. into it. Big yeah. into it. So like right now, I don't really care about it. And uh, right now, I kind of have different priorities. Right. You know? But if you're training for a sport, they, they really need yeah. to be squatting 400 pounds. You know? Right, right. Not really. You know what I mean? And and for me, I mean, since the pandemic started, I I can't, I couldn't go to the gym. And also, you know, the uh, I just didn't have enough time so i just started doing push-ups all the body weights like i've got a pull-up bar at home so that i yeah. can just knock it out well you think that's enough i just do push-ups and then just like air squats and pull -ups. yeah that's yeah so you know what for right like if you're cooped up in the house and you're working from home and right. you're getting a phd from home like you right <laughs> all sometimes you just need mentally is to just get your heart rate up yeah yeah you know because now all of a sudden your heart rate's up your endorphins are going now you feel good Right, it's very human nature to have to exert. Mm -hmm. right? We used to be able, have to go out and hunt right, for our right. food, right? Gather our food, so yeah. we need to expend in order to consume. Right, right, right. Now it's like you can order seamless, and the food is at your door. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Before yeah. it's like, oh, I need, I need a source of calories. Like mm -hmm. this is long, long time ago. I need to find an apple. Right, okay. right. How long are you gonna f look for an apple? Like the expenditure it takes to get this small apple, which is like a hundred calories, mm. versus. You could literally expend zero calories and consume 2,000 calories of pizza instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a different type of a world that we live in. You right, know what right. I mean? <laughs> right. But we're designed to expend. Yeah. 
right? And it's part of our human nature. So for you to be like, okay, I'm cooped up. I've been studying all day. Let me bang out freaking 20 pull-ups or something, get my uh, heart rate up, do some squats, and then feel good and feel like a human. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect for what that is. Right. You know, and it, it's good. It's maintaining, right? Yeah. There's people who just never do pull-ups. You're way ahead of the line for that. Right. But are those skills, when you're doing pull-ups here and there, going to carry over to you throwing someone with Tayo, throwing someone with a Sotogari, mm. you know, being able to fly through people, you know, at these dojos in Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> like, is it going to carry directly <laughs> over? Probably not, but it right. couldn't hurt. Right. It'll, right? yeah. I did also get from Fuji... Yeah, uh, the 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 pull the the uh, cords or yeah, good. Yeah, bands. Like it, yeah, you know? so I yeah I do like you know solo uchikomis here and there too. Yeah. So Fitness like, is yeah. such a foundation of mental health, right? You know what I mean, and then you know yeah. getting into mental health. Like I have my ideas about this stuff, but like yeah. right, diet, exercise, and sleep. Like yeah. those are the three pillars of health. Right? If you don't have that, anything outside of that is like if you have to have those three together if right. you're going to have good mental health first and foremost. Diet, exercise, and sleep. Right. You know what right. I mean? And this this is my issue. It's a lot of times, like, I don't feel good, whatever it is. Okay, are you sleeping well? No. Okay, right. you got to fix that, right? Oh, you know, I, I sleep well and I exercise, but I feel right. horrible, right? So oh, what's the missing piece of that pillar, right? Once you have all those three together, like, tight and perfect, and then, then you, you, know, you have these issues, yourself. then you can start, yeah. okay, maybe something's wrong, Yeah. you know? I see. But, like, that's sort of my idea. Mm. And uh, fitness huge part of it everyone should be doing this stuff I right think, right you know? so right now if you're training for something you have to have different training methodologies right but right now you're not training for anything mm -hmm. right right now you're living relatively sedentary life you're not yeah. walking everywhere like you did in new york you're not playing soccer tuesday thursdays you're not coming to my dojo monday wednesdays fridays right but you have to do something to keep your mind sane yeah you yeah know what i mean and then when you exercise you can sleep better yeah i i that's so true. I get, it, you get yeah. restless. I guess that the, the energy hasn't been spent. So I guess you're, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's a very, very strong link between, like I said, everyone, I'm not a scientist, Yeah. <laughs> but there's a very, very strong link between sleep and diet. Right. You so if you don't right. sleep, yeah. you're much likely to crave sugar and high energy foods uh, to get that, to make up for that lack of energy. Right. I see. Right. So it's like, okay, I didn't sleep well. Uh, you know, and then your willpower is kind of depleted. Mm -hmm. I'm craving sugar to make up for that thing. I'm going to eat this ice cream. Mm -hmm. and I don't really feel good. Now I'm not going to go work out. I didn't work out, so I can't sleep. Now you have going through this vicious cycle. Right, right, You right. do that for three months, and, and you, you wonder, gotta... man, I don't really feel good. Right. You know, right? It's like, why don't you feel good, right? right. Like, you, you're not doing anything that you're supposed to be doing as a human, as an animal. Right. Now, we're animals, first and foremost, right? Yeah, yeah. And... And you're saying, you know, you don't have to do anything drastic to break out of the cycle. Maybe you just go for a walk a little, start small, and then... Yeah, start small. Oh. That's, that's, that's the most overlooked thing, right? Walking, yeah. anyone can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we kind of do it unnaturally. Just naturally, we just do right. it. You know, we're, but... Yeah, we're built yeah. like that. We're built to walk. Built like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, fitness. Right. Right. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. To answer your question... I think it, yeah. that's great, you know? Bang out some push-ups, bang out some pull-ups, don't overdo it, you know, focus right. on stretching, do this, do that, and you rollerblading, that's good, yeah, you know? That, that's all I'll do. I, I'm, I, now I'm, I think soccer is opening up, so I might try to join yeah. a, like a little league. Yeah. Yeah, I do you miss it. You look good, you look yeah. healthy. Yeah, I I think I I was heaviest during the peak of the pandemic, I, I and then I really had to. I remember I, I drank a lot of beer because I had mm. like nothing to do I yeah because you know during the pandemic we, i you know everyone thought it was going to be over in a few months or yeah like that, and i it's like ah, just some sort of time drinking beer i think a lot of people did yeah that. it tastes good but yeah. then at the end yeah. like i weigh myself and i was like holy cow i had never been over 170 pounds in my life before the pandemic yeah and then i like cleared it very Oof. quickly so yeah i caught out beer and that really dropped it really well yeah. yeah, then and then trying to yeah pull up. Some Could definitely pushes. do a diet exercise, diet uh, episode. Diet too. episode too. Definitely yeah, that. yeah. That that's a little bit more. You know, I got we got to get a dietitian in here. Or something, yeah, you know? <laughs> but then I yeah I remember like I I you know my wife's a doctor, so I ask her, and then she said, "There's no one." She just says, "No one knows what the best way is." Like it's no so complex. Knows, yeah. yeah, 
That's one of my philosophies in life too, man. No one knows anything. So, <laughs> even the experts. Yeah. You know? <laughs> They're all trying to make educated guesses, I guess. The best they do, guesses. Yeah. 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 Doctors too, man. It's like, yeah. you know, uh, uh, not to talk back about that about doctors, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing that, but it's right. like uh, a lot of the times when I have consulted them about, you know, issues about uh, injuries and this mm. and that, it's like, you know, there, it's not a very full, right? It's hard Physical to figure Physical therapists out, yeah. a lot of the times have better insight into the, the mechanics of the body. You know, you go to a primary care and he's like, hey man, I have elbow issues. They're like, okay, let's take an x-ray. Let's see what happens. Oh, you need oh, to yeah. get an MRI. Go see an orthopedic surgeon. Bye. Like yeah. they don't really know. You know what I mean? They say, yeah, just don't do judo for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the cure. Right? It has <laughs> nothing else to do with anything else. You know what I mean? Like, how do I make it better then? It's like, oh, just rest it. Right. Rest it and let the muscles around it atrophy. Like, what about, you know, you have to load the tendons for it right. to recover. Like, you know, like, don't even, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> I get so mad about it. You know, and it's not like, oh, doctors don't know anything. Of course, they know some stuff, right? They yeah. had to go through this crazy rigorous training. They study yeah. all this stuff. They know more than me for certain. Yeah. Right? It's like. But something specific to right. injuries. Like, for instance, cauliflower ear. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know how many doctors told me some like wrong stuff about that? You know, like I've had co- like doctors, like primary care doctors, like what the hell is that thing? I've never seen that. Thing. Right. It's like, what do you mean you never seen this before? You gotta, you gotta go to the right experts. I think you know. Dude, I had a yeah. doctor one time tell me like my my cauliflower ear on the right side, right? Right, I mean, right. It's a nice little deformed thing. He's like, yeah. Oh yeah, the, when the blood drains, it'll just go back to normal. I'm like, really? Uh- <laughs> really? Like, yeah, it's soft. It's just yeah. blood. It'll just go back to normal. I'm like, that's not true. Right. And I, uh, th- my, my wife's a dermatologist, so they actually learn about it a little. I think because yeah. it, it's skin. And yeah. I remember I was so happy. I, I think I sent, you the, I sent you guys a photo of, like, yeah. from her uh, textbook. I was so mm. happy of, yeah. when I saw that. I don't, yeah. I don't really have it, but I would love to. It. Yeah, I don't even know. I I think that's another thing. Like, not all people get it. Like, some people get it really easily. Yeah. You have have a very pretty one. I have have, have like a perfect cauliflower. I know. That's the ideal. It's kind of cauliflower. I have it on here. But it's... uh, This one's kind of annoying because it's more in here. Oh, so so you can't really put... put That's why my earbud is not in this one. Oh, I see. Uh, It's a whole thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I think, yeah, we... Our bodies... I think the constant theme is our bodies are very complex. So you try yeah. to know yourself, but at the same time, don't overcomplicate your regimen, you know. Don't overcomplicate it. The best regimen is yeah. the one that you stick with. Really. Yeah. That's yeah. really the key. And, you know, you can't just talk about fitness and training without talking about diet and sleep. Right, right. Right. And if your goal is grappling, then you have to do grappling. Period. Right. You know, so, and I hear, listen to this one. This is another one I hear. Hey, I'm thinking about getting back into judo, but... I gotta get in shape first. I'm gonna go go to the gym every day instead. Oh, it's I like, see. I see those posts a lot on Reddit. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's like w- you want to do judo, go freaking do judo. Right. Whatever you're doing in the gym that you think is good for judo is probably not good for judo. Right. Just get in the room and go do judo. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, of course, like there are exceptions. Mm-hmm. If you're morbidly obese and you can't get out of bed, then you have to be able to physically right. be able to come into the dojo first and right. foremost. Right. But if you want to do judo, go do judo, you know, and then right. find a good instructor that's going right. to keep you safe and then tell them about your issues so then they can kind of watch out for you and protect you. And right. finding the right dojo is paramount because if you go to a dojo full of killers and no one cares about you, they're going to injure you. Right, right, right. Right. So then it goes back to the... All the topic we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So then, so I guess, yeah, then uh, uh, before we close, let's talk about that side. I guess like we've talked a lot about the supplemental training. Yeah. Um. So, but like you said, a lot of people approach martial arts. Yeah. Judo, BJJ, boxing, whatever, uh, as a form of fit, uh, as a way to stay in, stay fit or yeah become fit. Mm, so it's a good question. How do you? How would you approach? How would you recommend people approach that? Uh, a martial arts as a, like a fitness routine. Yeah. Like, so <clears throat> here we go. So yeah. people, I said, know yourself first and foremost. Right. There's some people that like don't like going to the gym. Mm-hmm. Some people just not intrinsic and motivated enough to learn any of this stuff and go bench and they right. find bench incredibly boring. Right. Right. And they just can't do it. Mm-hmm. Running. Terrible. Well, I listen yeah. to a podcast like, oh man, this is 
boring. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then some people like the gamification of sports. Right. 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 So now all of a sudden you're not really thinking about like calorie expenditure and like energy systems. Right. You're just kind of doing it. Right. The goal right. is to put this ball into that hoop now i'm like running around trying to do it mm. and in the meantime i'm like jumping running moving mm-hmm. things of that nature similarly with martial arts if you join a dojo like a good dojo right there is going to be some portion of the class dedicated to that kind of conditioning Mm-mm-mm. not much of it but some of it right and actually learning the skill you're exerting Right. Doing this stuff and trying to execute the moves against someone that doesn't want to, there's resistance, therefore, you're building on that. Right, right. Right? So that's why a lot of the people are like, hey, I'm here to get fit. Mm-hmm. I can't go to the gym. I don't like running. Mm. I want to get in shape. Mm-hmm. And then I, I want to also learn a skill at the same time. Right. Right? And there has to be a class sort of dedicated to that because that's the majority of the people. Right, right. Right, if you're running a dojo. So if you're one of those people that wants to get in shape, by doing martial arts, God bless you. Go do it. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm going to start running first and lifting first. No, go do it. Use that as a means to get in shape. Right. Do, do you, <clears throat> at KBI, uh, yeah. do you have a, what, how do you structure the class for, the, for those people? Do, just for the audience. I mean, I, I obviously know how it's yeah, run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So seven to eight is beginner and immediate. Yeah, right. Eight o'clock, the beginners go home. Eight yeah. to nine, we do all live. Right. And then that's sort of invite only, right? Right. That's kind of the way we run it. So seven to eight, first 10 minutes. Right. Stretching, exercises, basic push-ups, mm-hmm. running, you know, run, jogging around the dojo. Okay, so now you're already working out. You're putting into account mobility work. A lot right. of the times I make Eugene do it because he's an expert at this stuff. Right, right. Break falls, going down, right? Important skill in judo, right? Slightly cardio ish yeah, it is. Right. It is. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, you get winded at the end of that. Yep. Yeah, Uchikomi. Yeah, also cardio. You're yeah. exerting yourself. You're learning a skill. You're trying to reinforce good habits mm-hmm. and try to break bad habits. Obviously, right, right. And then it's sort of ritualistic. We learn, and now all of a sudden we're doing nagakomi. Mm. You're doing it fast. You're doing it explosively. It's almost like plyometric training. Mm-hmm. Right. Similarly, Niwaza, and now we do grip fighting. Now there's a little bit more tension, a little bit more resistance. Mm-hmm. Right. We do live portion of the class. That's just you know. Nawaza mostly for the beginners and intermediates. Mm. And then at the end, we do some sort of conditioning exercise. Okay, one minute on the clock, burpees. That's sort of my favorite go-to. Right. Because that's a nice one because if you're exhausted already, you could kind of dog that. Mm-hmm. You could go at your own pace. And that's what it's for. I'm not there to like be a drill sergeant and make everybody, ah, you got to do this. You got to spread it. Right. Because that causes injuries. <laughs> right, right. That causes injuries. And then that causes people to overexert themselves and not be able to train the next day, the day after. And they can't get fit then. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the worst thing. Right. Pushing right. yourself too hard too soon. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not talking like A-level athletes here. I'm talking right. about like just an average general population. Right. Gen pop, I like to call it. <laughs> right? Yeah. So the burpees are good. And then sometimes we'll do two sets. Sometimes we'll do three sets. One mm. of my favorite things to do is four-minute push-up challenge that Martin Rooney came up with. Mm. You have four minutes to do as many push-ups as you can. I like that one. Can. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a great one. So you kind of know, right? And you take breaks whenever you feel like taking a break. Right. And then you see how many you can do. Right? Yeah. And you have a baseline. Of course, you don't want to jump right into it because then if you've never done push ups before, you're going to be incredibly sore. Right, right. But it's also kind of go at your own pace, design your own situation. Mm-hmm. So I see, I see. I like to tell the beginners your job is to get here. And then right. as long as you get here, you will burn, you will exert, you will train, you will be fit. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I'm not going to kill you because a lot of it is go at your own pace. Right. You do what you can. You feel good. You do more. You don't feel good. You do a little less, but you still did the uchikami. You still did the stretching. You still did the cardio. You're still doing some sort of push-ups or whatever. Right. Strength-based thing. So that's like an overall one-hour almost fitness class, but you're learning a technique. Because mm-hmm. you're learning from me. Right. The best. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good because once they, you know, beginners start coming and then they get more fit and more fit yeah and they'll probably want to you know push themselves yeah. a little more and more yeah that's that's the and it's a good, good part, litmus yeah. test for me yeah with the one minute burpees at the end yeah because now i'm one i'm not doing it you know yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm watching to see who's pushing themselves right who wants to do so it more. the yeah. people who i see day in and day out they're dogging it yeah and then they're coming to me and saying i want to compete mm-hmm. i'm gonna say i'm thinking yeah no you're not Right, right, right. Because you're not working hard. Mm-hmm. And then I could see sort of the psychological profile. This person thinks they're working hard, 
but I'm watching them and they're always dogging the burpee. <laughs> There's a discrepancy there. Yeah, yeah. How they actually are and how they think they are. Right, 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 right. That person is that kind of person. Yeah. Do I address it? Do I tell them? Do I try to coach them to be better? Maybe, maybe not. Depends. Mm. Depends who in person, how invested I am, right? Right. I, what does this person want? What is it there for? Mm. Do I care about them? So is this person worth me putting that time in versus, you know, the Peters and the Heans and the right. Clappers and the, all yeah. these other people who I'm already invested in, mm. who all, already care about? Right, right. Right? So yeah, it's a great litmus test. That, that Something like that, I think, is huge. Mm. You know, all that stuff is... Uh, yeah, that's 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 my approach in the dojo for getting in shape mm. and having sort of that fitness thing. You know I see. I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's a good structure. So yeah, then uh, yeah, I think that that was a good overview um, on how to you know weave in fitness into your grappling. Uh, yeah. So keep it simple. Just try keep to be simple. more active. Yeah. You know, don't exert yourself too much. Yep. That's, yeah, all of, and then do grappling, I guess, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, grapple, man, right? <laughs> yeah. You have to grapple. That's what we're all here for, right? Yeah, exactly. We're just naturally grapplers. So, <laughs> so yeah. um, any uh, any closing words for the audience? Nope. No. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for listening. You could always reach out to me and Peter through Instagram and such. Follow right. us, subscribe to us. Please share this podcast if you like right. it. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. Oh, I, I, I do want to mention, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but we did hit 10,000 downloads. Yeah. yeah. Thanks Huge. for your support. Yeah. Thank so you. So that, that get, uh, keeps us going and yep. hopefully for the next 10,000. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks Thank for listening guys. and uh, stay tuned for the next episode.